One of Limestone's key priorities is ensuring the school environment is inclusive and that everyone's needs are met. Today we're in a sensory room and we'll see how the space is used as a therapy for children with limited communication skills. The first thing I notice when I come into the sensory room is I'm seeing a variety of items. Could you tell me why such the variety? Um, so when it comes to sensory, you have to meet all of the different senses. So with the board that the students made, we stuck with, um, it's mostly obviously touch, but it's different uh, textures. And so we try and meet, we try and meet everything. The lower ones on the bottom were for the younger kids and the ones on the top are more for the older students with the magnetic stuff and, and challenging them with the, the locks. But we're basically just trying to meet every sense when it comes to the board itself. What part did you play in bringing this room to life? So in my classroom, I have a little back room and I have a fish tank back there and a couple of comfy chairs and I get a lot of students that are coming into my room and using that space as a really calming area and so we tried to figure out how we could meet the needs of more students because I can only fit one or two in that back room so then we just started exploring the idea of having one in the class or in the school itself and we were able to find this room, which was a storage room that wasn't being used for much of anything. <laughs> and it was just filled with a whole bunch of stuff that we cleared out and, and just started from there. So when you say we, who else was a, was a part of the project? So the EA that's in my classroom, and I have a student from St. Lawrence who's in my classroom. And we were talking a lot about how we could meet other kids' needs in the, in the school. And then my students. So it was actually just a project that they started and they were given a budget and they were given a full reign of going on and exploring what a sensory room involved and all the things that they needed to have inside of a sensory room and they actually chose all of the items that are in the room which is really great yeah. and so they feel like they've got that they had control over yeah, everything yeah. that was happening so they have a real piece of this room in them um, they also helped out with all of the flooring and everything so yeah and then they built the board themselves so how does a sensory room support students' learning? Um, lots of students have sensory processing issues or they can't regulate themselves. And there's lots of chaos that goes on in a classroom sometimes. So it can be really loud, lots of things going on, and that can be overstimulating for a lot of them and they need a place to go that they can actually feel calm and that can settle their body. And so this place allows them to come here and to settle themselves. And it also helps in the classroom itself because if students are overstimulated and dysregulated, it can actually cause more chaos in the room and other kids can be affected by that. So by giving them the opportunity to come to this room, it allows them to leave the classroom, allowing the classroom to settle, but also allowing them to settle and to feel, um, and to feel safe and, and that they've got some sort of coping strategy that they can go to instead of just you know, utter chaos or wandering the hallways. This is a great space for them. A sensory room can act as a calming oasis for students and gives them some additional support. And this initiative is another great example of collaboration and how learning comes alive. Learning in Limestone is brought to you by the Limestone District School Board.